Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar all around SPIF Commission Estimator. I am Brita Hurley, and I'm thrilled to be joined by Jason Stapleton, one of my favorite customer account executives here at SPIF. And today we're going to give a brief introduction uh, to the core challenges that SPIF solves for, which is then a fantastic segue into why we built the SPIF Commission Estimator in 2022. It's really fascinating, you know, how this functionality came to life and truly humbling on how many sellers have already benefited from this tool. But before we get there, let's talk about a major problem affecting everyone's organization, unmotivated sales teams. No, it's not just you. The latest number on rep turnover is 35% in B2B sales. The economic climate mixed with a younger workforce are just two of the factors that are really playing into this number. Imagine being a first time seller alone in your house, never experiencing the buzz of a sales floor. We have to remember that this is a common scenario for many of our teams, but the problem of unmotivated sales teams just doesn't end there. They're costly. It takes nearly 200 days to replace one of your sales reps. So all in all, you are looking at one and a half to two times a sales rep's annual salary to replace them. And Spiff really wanted to help solve for this challenge. So Spiff set out to create a more motivated, more successful sales team. And in doing that, we've actually brought more trust, more transparency across the entire organization. So by driving motivation for the sellers, we've also created trust through the finance team, the operation managers, the finance leaders. SPIF really is delivering real-time automation of some of the most complex commission processes in organizations. But with the seller being top of mind, SPIF really has honed in on what this experience means for a rep. So with customizable metric charts and displays, they can have transparency throughout their entire day. There's real-time data updates that update as frequently as every 15 minutes, so they're never a step behind. And there's also the ability for them to really trace or drill into every calculation so they have a better understanding of what they're making and why. SPIF has won the hearts of the reps and their organizations. Just of a few of our amazing customers, Clary has already seen improved visibility and more motivation across their sellers. The RadNet sales team has said they've so saved 42 hours every month. The sales directors are no longer having this back and forth with their individual contributors because they have the transparency and the information right at their fingertips. And 15.5 has said that they have increased sales rep transparency by 10 times. But we know there's more to be done, which is why we've built SPIF Commission Estimator. So I'm excited to turn it over to you, Jason. Awesome. Thanks, Brita. Yeah, so I guess at the fundamental core, there's the question of like, why do we even pay commissions to sales reps? And of course, the goal is to motivate behavior, right? Like we want to close as many deals as possible, bring as much revenue as possible into the business and motivated reps are going to perform better. There was a, a study that was done out of the Harvard, Harvard Business School and Professor Chung basically did an analysis to see when is the motivation going to come the most for individuals, right? And he concluded through that research that sales reps work harder for the chance to earn a reward than they do after actually receiving one. And so the promise, right? The, the goal of like having this incentive out there that's something that they could attain is going to be even more motivating than having received it. And so what we wanted to do here at SPIF is change the paradigm here a little bit. Uh, whereas kind of historically, we're looking at situations where the reps, you know, maybe for their paycheck, they're understanding what the commission was on the deal that was sold. 
we want to change that and we want to present those numbers to them as early as possible. And so that leads us to this, like, what if you could show your team that reward before it's earned and like long before it's earned? So like really early in the deal cycle, if we could show this to reps and they can start thinking about, you know, how big this deal could be and how impactful it could be to them. And so that led us to build the commission estimator. So commission estimator is built directly within Salesforce. And I'll go ahead and jump in and show you a demo of what that looks like. But at the high level, what we were trying to accomplish here is essentially showing the sales rep that commission payout as soon as possible. But we don't want that to be like a finger in the wind estimate. We want this to be based on reality. We want it to be based on your commission plans and what you're actually going to be paying out to the reps. So, and we've had a few customers that have been using this already. And so, uh, you know, we can see here, like it literally takes one second to recalculate even the most complicated commission estimate. And I, that's massive in terms of savings for a sales rep, rather than for me to have like an Excel spreadsheet open or like a notepad or the back of a napkin sitting here where I'm like scribbling out what my commission might be. And frankly, I'm going to get it wrong. Rather than that, I can have this calculator that's showing me immediately what my payout is going to be. And it's actually going to be accurate. And it's going to be based on the rule set that my company has set up for me. And then having this type of transparency into deal commission changes how I price, discount, and create proposals. And so we'll show you the various components of commission estimator. And there's this can be tailored and configured to be exactly what you need for your scenario. But the goal here is to drive rep behavior. And so we'll look at things like multi-year contracts and how does that impact my commission or maybe services versus software and how those different revenues impact my commission. Uh, so let's go ahead and actually dive in and show you an example of kind of how commission estimator works within Salesforce. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. Okay, great. Rita, can you see this okay? All good. Perfect. Okay, so what I have here is this is a demo account, Smart Bytes. And in this demo environment, we're setting up like server infrastructure for our customers. So what I have here is Apple server infrastructure. I have a closed date that's in the future. And I have a stage that is not closed one, right? This is kind of early in the analysis process here. And then as I go through here, I'm also going to go ahead and set my contract length, which for right now, we're just looking at a one-year deal. So let me go ahead and save that. And as I'm going through this demo here, we're focusing on the opportunity object within Salesforce. SPIF commission estimator could be built on the opportunity object or on the quote object in Salesforce. And the layout is very similar and the flow is very similar. Uh, but we're, we're going to go ahead and focus on opportunity. We'll talk a little bit more about some of those differences later. So you can see here, I have this plugin directly into Salesforce. Let's get started. Uh, this doesn't yet have enough information to calculate my commission to estimate that. So I need to go ahead and add in some revenue information. Now, for our demo environment here, we've configured that to be based on product line items. But this could be based on any of your fields within your opportunities. So let me come in here and I'm going to add a few products. Now, for our purposes here, we're primarily commissioning off of software and then services fees. So I'm going to add just a few of each and you can kind of see how that uh, gets built out. Then we'll go in and uh, add in some quantities of these products as well. And the quote through CPQ is going to work very similar, right? Because you're just adding those line items to the quote. Okay, great. So now that I have that revenue information in here, I've got my total ARR and I've got my months. Then you can see here that SPIF commission estimator calculates real time. So you can see here that I'm on the AE mid market plan. And this is the total commission payout that I'm going to receive on this opportunity if this all closes like this, right? Like if nothing changes uh, between now and deal close. Um, for, for the services piece, you can see what I'm getting commissioned on that. 
Uh, let's go ahead and look at our product line items. We'll make sure that we have some software in there too. You can see that right after I add those new line items, this recalculates and shows me what that software piece is versus the services component. And so real time, I'm getting the feedback in terms of how this is going to contribute to my commission. Now there's this multi-year piece as well. And you can see now that since this is based on a 12 month deal, we, there's no multi-year component to this. So let's go ahead and change that and say, okay, well, what if I was able to get them on three years, so a 36 month contract, what would that do to my commission? And that's going to recalculate and a three year contract, that's pretty meaningful for my commission. And so I might really want to try to push them for a multi-year um, or we can adjust this uh, back to maybe like a two year contract and see what that effect is on my commissions. So real time, this is recalculating my commissions. Now it's important to note that this is actually going to be based on my calculations and the rule sets that I've set up within SPIF. So this is directly utilizing the SPIF platform and the commission calculations that I have built out in SPIF. So the good news there is that's going to then mean that this is going to exactly match what your actual payouts are at the end when this actually closes. However, part of that piece is like making sure that this is going to be accurate to, to like when it actually closes, like this is actually what I can rely on as a sales rep, is that we need to look at this holistically. So what that means is we need to take into, into account any of the impact from any of the other deals that I've closed during the period. And so this bottom graph here helps me to understand where I'm at uh, in terms of that piece, right? So how, how I'm performing with my other deals. So you can see here how far I am towards achieving my quota how much further this deal would put me towards achieving my quota. And then if I do achieve quota, then I can see what my multiplier is going to change to, what my accelerator is going to be. So I can see exactly how much I need to close to be able to qualify for that higher percentage payout. Now, a few pieces that I'll point out on here. Uh, this is based on whoever is logged into Salesforce. So right now I'm the account executive, I'm logged into the Salesforce, I'm viewing this opportunity. So this is going to be my commission payout. So this would be scoped to whoever is involved in the deal and whatever they're going to get paid out on the deal. So you might have like a BDR or a sales engineer or an SDR who's also getting commissioned on this deal. You might also have like the sales manager who has a roll up of commissions where you know all of their account executives commissions kind of roll up to them and then they're commissioned on the performance of their team. So when they log in and they view this opportunity, this is going to be scoped to them. If I'm looking at an opportunity that I'm not going to be commissioned on, then this won't show a commission calculation, right? Now, because this is built directly within Salesforce, there's a reporting piece that we get access to as part of this, where essentially we can run a report on any of these commission objects and we could even do trend lines if we wanted to, where essentially we see, you know, how has this changed over time for, for my various quotes? I could even do some like forecast estimates and I could say, okay, for my team out of everything that's open still in the pipeline, what would we have to pay out in commissions if everything were to close? And so that can help the finance team understand better, what are we gonna be on the hook for if all of this stuff closes? We can also look at trend lines of kind of how commission estimates have changed over time. Uh, we can also look at what is our initial commission estimate versus what is our final commission estimate. And that can help us to better understand, are we setting up like our deal flow and the structure for our, our opportunities? Are we maximizing that to drive rep behavior and drive, uh, drive rep adoption? And so then that can help us change our commission plans in the future to make sure that those things are in better alignment. So now if we go back over to the opportunity itself, you can see here, this is actually a link to the SPIF system directly. And I think here I'm gonna have to switch over my sharing so that you can see what that looks like. Bear with me for one minute here.
So here, this is going to go ahead and load the Spiff app within Salesforce so that I can go ahead and, and look at my deals within this. I'm going to go ahead and zoom into this so that you can see a little bit more, like, uh, like just zoomed in so that it's easier to see exactly what this is going to look like and what I, that's going to give you access to see. All right, zooming into this, I'm going to swap over to my statement so that you can see what that looks like. So the tab within Salesforce is going to show me my uh, rep statement, and it's going to show me my deals within the statement. Now, the way that we build these, these payments out within SPIF, the ones that map back to the commission estimator, is these are what-if rules, and they're also ghosts. They, they could be ghost rules. And so what-if rules are essentially an aggregate of all of the estimates that I have outstanding. So as the AE, I can come in here and I can open up any of these individual components. And I can see that this is the multi-year piece. And I can see a list of all of my opportunities that I have outstanding. And I can see how much commission is going to get paid out on each one of those if they are to close. And then I can see a grand total of like all of my open opportunities. And if I'm able to close all of them, what is going to be that commission that's based on all of those? And I can see that for each of the various components. Now, this can be configured to display the information that you want to to your reps that's going to be relevant for your reps. Uh, a good use case here also for these what-if rules is for managers, right? Because a manager could come in here, and then they could see a roll-up of all of the deals that are outstanding on their team and how those are going to actually translate into commission for them as a manager. Uh, and then they can work with their team members on any of those uh, outstanding deals to help drive higher close rates. So I think that that's probably a good place to stop, Brita, and maybe open it up for any questions that we have that have come in through the chat. Awesome. Thank you, Jason. Um, and a few of these questions you touched upon lightly, but um, just to make sure there's clarity um, with our audience. So does this only work with Salesforce CPQ? Yeah, great question. And actually, I'm going to share the uh, commission estimate screen here so that we can kind of point at some things while we're talking through this. Um, so for the opportunity object, this doesn't have to be tied into CPQ at all. So this is standard opportunity objects within Salesforce. And this, we can really tie in the estimate to anything that's tied or related to the opportunity. So this would be like opportunity splits, um, as you saw, those like products, line items, uh, you could even reference like opportunity teams through here if you wanted to. Uh, for the quote, the quote does rely on Salesforce's version of CPQ. So you have to be using Salesforce CPQ if you want to enable estimator on the quote. Great. Um, and then a little bit around just who can see what an estimator. So can managers see their direct reports? If you just review that again. Yeah, great. Yeah, great question. So, yeah, we wanted to make sure that this is going to be directly related to what you know what you're actually commissioned on. So, yes. So, essentially, when you enable Estimator within your Salesforce instance, your provision seats licenses, and then you can go ahead and assign those to whoever makes sense to have Estimator turned on. But when I'm as an AE visiting this page. If I'm the owner of this opportunity, or if I'm a deal split owner, uh, or if I'm on the opportunity team and it's configured for me to get a commission based on that behavior, then I'm going to see what my commission payout is going to be here. Um, likewise, if you're the manager and you come here and there's like a roll up, then that sales leader is going to see their portion of the commission here, not what their rep is going to be paid out. So if the manager wanted to see a full high level view of like all of their reps and what they're going to be paid out on for all of their deals, then they should go into SPIF and they can look at those what if rules and see holistically, you know, what are all of their reps going to get paid out? Thank you. Uh, question here around multi-deal estimation. We'd like to show an entire pipeline with close dates to illustrate the time it takes for these deals to close and how that can influence your payout. Yeah, great. So you can see here, uh, this bottom graph is representing my quota attainment. And so that's taking into consideration my multi-deal piece. 
However, if you, it really depends on like what your use case is. So if you're looking at a situation where you have like multiple open deals and you want to kind of take them all into effect, each of these components are effectively looking at a data set that we configure within SPIF. And so we can tell that data set to look at whatever we really want. So for example, if you wanted to, you could actually have this be a little bit more holistic and say, okay, one of these individual components is going to be all opportunities that are in finalizing closure. So then this could be like the finalizing closure opportunities line. And so for that component, we could do a calculation that's based on all of those opportunities that are open that, are, that have that stage applied to them. Uh, and you could do the reverse as well. So for example, I've got like a, a probability of this opportunity closing. If I change my stage and it puts me past a certain probability, like then I could show the commission payout here. Or if this was like below a 30% probability, we could actually have this like uh, calculate out to zero because maybe it's like too early in the process to be able to reliably produce a calculation. I know that some of the commission admins that we've worked with in the past have expressed those concerns of if it's super early in the process and we have really bad data, we don't want to go ahead and calculate a commission estimate for the sales rep that's going to be wildly off and set the sales rep expectations that like, hey, you're going to make $50,000 on this deal, when in reality, they might make $3,000 once there's better data. Uh, and so you can do some of that gating where essentially we're setting up the data set to be based on, you know, like the stage or some other field that you want to set. Great, super helpful. And another great question here around configuration. How easy is this to set up within the SPIF platform? Yeah, great question. So there's two components to the configuration here for the setup. Because this is built directly into Salesforce, your Salesforce admin will need to go in and install this plugin. Uh, and we can send you, we have a series of steps. So we have documentation that you can send to them and get a sense uh, for that time investment on their side. But that goes through step-by-step -step exactly what they'll need to do to enable this within Salesforce. And then on the SPIF side, because we're using the SPIF calculations directly, we need those calculations in SPIF to be available so that we can reference those for these commission estimates. Uh, and so if you have commission calculations that are in SPIF today and you want to use those basically exactly and you don't want to deviate from them at all for your commission estimates, uh, then there's a matter of essentially copying those rules and then pointing to those. There's like a mapping exercise that our professional services team will do to map those fields into what Salesforce is looking for. Uh, to provide those commission estimates. And so those are the two components of the implementation for estimator. And it's going to be on a, it's going to be based on like a case by case basis. Uh, and so we're happy to chat with you and talk specifics about like how many plans you're wanting to turn this on for uh, and give you a better estimate. Awesome. It looks like final question here. How does commission estimator work for opportunity splits? Yeah, great question. So if we had, for example, We'll take this Apple server infrastructure as an example. Uh, if I was a 50% owner or like this was being split 50% with me and 50% with another AE, uh, again, I would just see only my commission portion on the split. Uh, and so then presumably if they're getting paid the exact same that I am, then they would essentially be making the exact same commission on this deal on their end. Uh, but of course, the attainments, we're going to look at those separately, right? And so the other AE might have uh, achieved their attainment, whereas I haven't yet. So those are looked at separately and individually. And so it's going to be specific to their use case. Uh, but there's no limit on opportunity split owners, right? So you could actually have like 10 or 20 people that are all commissioned on the same deal if you want to. Uh, in fact, if you wanted to, you could actually have like literally everybody at your company uh, or everybody who's a user within Salesforce if you wanted to do like a profit sharing uh, commission or something like that across everybody, you could totally do that within this and every person would see their own commission estimate within Commission Estimator. Great, those are all the questions I'm seeing on my end. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. If you do have further questions, please reach out to um, the team at SPIF, whether it's your account executive or your CSM. would love to talk uh, to you further about this. I know Jason has already been working with a lot of customers who are seeing success and are 
just super excited about this functionality. Jason, any closing words? No, I don't think so. I mean, everybody should be doing this because it's awesome, right? So like, yeah, commission estimator is super great. I, if you want to talk through any specific details, like Brita said, uh, reach out to us. We'd be happy to talk through how this will apply for your situation. And we can talk through, you know, configuring and customizing those various components to exactly fit what you need. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Thanks, everyone. Bye.